The Bible tells us that lying is a sin as we see in Leviticus 19 verse 11. However, we often find ourselves in situations where we need to, you know, tell a lie to probably protect a person from immediate danger or also protect the person's feelings. Take, for example, um, your friend's spouse who is abusive asks you about her whereabouts and you know where the person is, but you're trying not to let the spouse know just so that your friend will not be, you know, beaten blue black. Can you consider that a sin? Can you consider that a lie? Or is it excusable? Hi Saints, my name is Marianne Ushi and this is Catholic Faith Forum. Our topic today is when is it lying? And I have two amazing guests, in fact they are family, here on the show. But you're going to be meeting them right after this break. Do not go anywhere, I'll be right back. Welcome back, Saints. This is Catholic Faith Forum, and I am Mary Ann Ushi. Yes, our topic today is when is it lying? And I have two amazing guests here with me in the studio. First of all, I have a guest whose seat I have now taken. <coughs> yes. <laughs> Nonso Igwe is here. Nice to meet you once nice again. Nice to meet you too. Yes, you're back on CFF. How do you feel? I feel very, very, very... No, I have to like very, 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 very 10 mm -hmm. times. Very good. <laughs> okay. It's not even a show. All right. Actually, it's fine. I also have with me Father Jude Mary Owo, popularly known as Friday J, yep. who happens to be the director of Dominican Media. It's oh, good to Padre. be here. It's good to be here. I didn't know I was going to be on this season, but hey, we are here now. I mean, I didn't even know how much I missed this until Aww. I'm here, and it feels like oh, it's bringing so, so much, much memories, memories back. It's good to have you. It's good to have you. So, now, so what have you been up to? Hmm, I've been up to life. <laughs> I'm enough to like Good actually. life. Good life. Good life. Life has been life in her. Thank you, mm. Father. Father knows about these things. <laughs> <laughs> life has been life in me. I've been working and all of that. So, mm. yeah. Life okay, but you look good, good though. Huh? Well, is this what I'm going to be looking like when I leave here? Oh, I can't the wait. Blessings you blessings know? You, know? you know? <laughs> have work to do. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. <laughs> Father, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing good. I'm fine. Okay. It's, been, it's a good time, so thank God. It's a good time. Yes, sir. All right, let's have a good time. Yes, so our topic sir. today is, when is it lying? Hmm. Lying, lying, hmm. lying. Let's begin with the basics. What is a lie? Hmm. So a lie is a statement, often a statement hmm. that is said with intention of deceiving someone hmm. else. So, the, so two things. One, it has to be a statement. And the second thing is that the intention is to deceive. deceive. Yes. Mm. Okay. Do you have I like, any I like the way Father has put it because it's now about the result, what you intend to, you I mean, what you, what's your aim with the lie? For me, I feel it's anything that is not true. Mm. Okay. Once I can pinpoint and say that this is not a fact, then it's a lie. So mm. whether, whether or not you're trying to deceive a person or not, I probably they're not saying the truth. truth. It's okay. a lie. Okay. Okay. Ah, see? perspectives that's yeah. good all right so um can people lie unintentionally like you just said now maybe you're just not saying the truth you know what ways can people lie unintentionally mm, like i said the idea is that you have to be making a statement yes okay and then okay. secondly it's directed at somebody else so why are you saying what you're saying that's what i always ask myself mm -hmm. are you just speaking to fill in blank spaces mm -hmm. or are you speaking because you want to communicate something to the other person yes. now what is the content of your communication um, and if you are not sure of what you are saying, mm. why say it? So it's better to be quiet and not find any fault or not create any problems than say, because I want to speak. And then you say something that you're not even sure, sure. of. So that already creates a problem. Mm. So, I, feel, yeah, I feel like you can also lie unintentionally, just like you asked, because for instance, someone asks you a question, oh, Marianne, did you go here? And the first thought that comes to mind is, no, I didn't go. And maybe you went, you went there. there. And before you're able to correct, the person already picks that as a dream. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's already a problem because why would you want to say something without even processing it? No, you don't want to say it. It just comes out. It yeah. just comes out. You don't have, <laughs> you don't have control of your mouth. <laughs> No, that, that's for me. That's already. A you know, father, father is very. I mean, very. You know, <laughs> strict. You know? Yeah, it's, not about strict. It's, it's about all the about that, process no, and all of that. For me, the thing is, you have a brain uh, okay. where everything is processed. Mm. Then whatever message you've processed, your lips now convey it. There should be a a bridge, or at least some kind of process of mm. this thought descending from your mind to your lips mm. you don't just uh, yeah things don't just flow like that you so basically to... you're saying there's no excuse for pathological liars 
Yeah. Well, we'll get to them. Their own case is a case. Yeah, it's those ones like in their DNA. Yeah, yeah, there's like a problem it's part with them. Of them. When you say someone is a pathological liar, mm. the person has already created a character mm. or a pattern of behavior that now makes it almost like an involuntary action. I don't know when I said it or I just said it and now, and now I'm not thinking mm. about No, that's the pro- there's already a problem there. So I always tell people, watch your behavior because before long it becomes your character mm-hmm. okay. so pathology like when pathological pathology like yeah. biology is part of you already your nature is inside is inside is ingrained in born but mm. but if, if you're mm. pathological <laughs> if you are a pathological liar mm-hmm. and let's say you lie about even maybe things that i would say are inconsequential yeah. like for example now my sister sometimes you just come into the house and she can say Ah, there is um, shawarma for you in the microwave. And there's nothing there. Okay. You now go there and come and she's like, sorry. <laughs> I just felt like, you know, would just, you would you say that that's a, is it, is it a sin? Is it a bad thing? Or well, maybe there, is there something like lying for fun? Yeah, I wouldn't say lying for fun. I think it's clearly a prank. Mm. They can just come out and tell you that, oh, there was nothing there. And But it's, like Father said at the, at the very beginning, if... You're trying to deceive somebody. somebody. Like, tell somebody, oh, this thing is there. And you stand. Have you met liars? They will stand by it. <laughs> like, they will lie and they to will the flinch. End. She's like, I am I've there. People, I've met people like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think were... I met somebody in secondary school. And I, was, and I think that was, that was the point when I started thinking twice about human beings. Mm-hmm. You know, this guy would lie about everything. And... Being who I was, I, I was never used to people telling lies. I, never, I was never used to people giving you a straight face lie. Like, as soon as you say something, they have a story. They have a whole story exactly. that they can spin out of that. That is not true. No shred of truth in it. And for me, that it kind of it shaped me in a way that was not so, I would say, not so good. Because yeah. now when somebody says something, I have to really, really think, think about, about it. And then it. ask the person... Are you sure what you're telling me is true? Because if I take it as true and then find out that it's not true, we're going to have a big problem. Okay. Uh-huh. So, so that, that brings to me to my careful. next question. Are there behavioral patterns for liars? Or is it that, you know, you really... Are there, is there a way to detect when a person is lying? But hang on there. You're not going to answer that now. After this break, you'll be answering that. It's time for us to find out who our saint of the week is. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. Our saint of the week is St. Peter Chrysologus. St. Peter Chrysologus was born at Imola, Italy, in 380. He was an adult convert to Christianity. After his theology studies, he was ordained a deacon and later a priest by Cornelius, the bishop of Imola. Peter so much admired the life and teachings of Cornelius that he was inspired to live as a monk for many years, embracing the lifestyle of simplicity self-discipline, and prayer. However, his monastic life came to an end after the death of Archbishop John of Ravenna in 430. After John's death, Peter was raised to the office of bishop by Pope Sixtus III. In Ravenna, Peter was warmly received by the then Western Emperor Valentian III and his mother Gala Placidia. She was said to have later given him the title Chrysologus, meaning golden-tongued, because of his preaching skills. Many people were still practicing paganism in Ravenna when he began his work there, and this caused other Christians to fall away from the faith. He reformed and solidified the church there with his preaching and by encouraging frequent reception of communion. Many of his homilies are still intact, Most are brief because he did not want to exhaust the attention of his listeners. Anyone who wishes to frolic with the devil cannot rejoice with Christ, he told his people. He combated monophysitism, one of the most pervasive heresies of his day, spread by the heretic Eutyches. It's held that Christ did not possess a distinct human nature in union with his eternal divine nature. He also counseled Eutyches, who had asked for his support, to avoid causing division, but to learn from other heretics who were crushed when they hurled themselves against the rock of Peter. During his time as an archbishop, he built new churches, improved the city's cathedral, and contributed to ending monophysitism. In anticipation of his death, Peter Chrysologus 
later returned to Imola and died in the year 450. And in 1729, he was made a doctor of the church, largely as a result of his simple, practical, and clear sermons, which have come down to us, nearly all dealing with gospel subjects. His feast day is celebrated on July 30th. St. Peter Chrysologus, pray for us. Welcome back, saints. I hope you emulate the life of the saint. All right. So before the break, I asked if there are behavioral patterns to, you know, detecting when a person is lying. Yeah. Behavioral patterns. I'm not very good with reading patterns, but okay. I'm able to at least look at experience. So what's been my experience of this person? Has hmm. uh, this person ever said something to me before that was not true? So I, do, I make my deductions from my own personal experience with people. And the first thing is to say, okay, what has been my experience with this person? Has this person ever lied to me? What was their reaction when I confronted them yeah. with the truth? Okay, hmm. and the person is just complacent. The person smiled at the person laughed and I said, I just, I was just playing with you, Joe. Uh -huh. And so all of those, things, I try you not to... You must being careful. Uh, <laughs> no, of course. So I usually don't just make one blanket statement about people. I don't just conclude that because somebody lied to me before. The person is a liar. No. Mm -hmm. I want to know what was that person's reaction when I confronted them okay. with that behavior. That's what will now make you decide no, I'm not how decide. you... It's okay. It's like, this, this is this person's destiny. <laughs> the person has chosen that. I let them just stay. So for me, I always like think, think about it like this. How come you never teach children to lie? Mm. Okay, so lying is one thing that you cannot call each other and say, oh, say this. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, there are cases where people can do that. And then the child falls down. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead and tell him I'm not around. <laughs> my daddy said, I should tell you that. Yeah, and they still go and tell the truth. But when you say child that lies, yeah. nobody teaches them. They just start lying. Just say, oh, did you take this? No, I didn't. And you see their mouth full of chocolate. Did you eat the chocolate? <laughs> no, I didn't eat this. Oh, were you doing this? No, I wasn't doing this. I bought their lying. So that's how for me I feel like I look at everybody like that if you tell me something and I find it hard to believe yeah. I'm a very intu intuitive person so I trust my own intuitions yeah. once I can glean or I can just feel in my mind that oh this person is lying I will just know that you are lying and Before another thing is don't be this person's mother <laughs> Okay, Charlie, I'm gone. <laughs> I mean, another thing is, I think that most liars always exaggerate mm, it's true. Mm. exaggerate with their, with their emotions sure with their reactions, yes. the way they react to things, they always yeah. go over. But you see a guy who wants to, who is a terrible person, you mm. get, and then he he's lying. You would know. Nobody wants to cry to <laughs> me on the ground, to roll on the floor. And they're always doing they're it. They'll still do over those things. Thank you. They'll still do those things that they, was that they would ordinarily say they won't do even mm. for i have like some cousins of mine too that do things like that and did you do this no i didn't don't cry you don't no, do one you. time one of them stressed my life I, I was just looking for something and i just knew that this guy is lying and he was lying so i think they always exaggerate yeah. like father said that they have some mannerisms yeah. it's mm -hmm. way they behave yeah. and they may just laugh it off like make it look like a joke when whereas it's like a it real thing or something that is serious so yeah. I think these are things that we can actually pinpoint and, and then say that this, is, yeah. this person is lying. Okay. So um, is there a difference now between hiding the truth and telling a lie? Mm. <laughs> Dicey. Yes, the there is. is um, when you say hiding the truth, what do you mean by hiding the truth? So like I started with the show with a... Um, a scenario, okay. yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So your friend's abusive spouse says, oh, where is she? And then you know that the person is probably in your house okay. hiding from the spouse. Okay. Now you're hiding the truth. Okay. You decide, that, oh, I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Or... okay. So what I, the way I try to say that without making the person who is protecting the truth mm -hmm. look as if they've done something wrong is to say that this person who is demanding the truth does not deserve the, the truth. truth. Mm. Mm. So okay. but if you look at it from the point of view of the person who is trying to do a good, which is in this case, mm. presenting somebody who would otherwise be harmed yeah. because of what this other person is going to do. Um, I look at it from the point of view of the other person. Can the person handle the truth? Mm. If I say she's here, what would that person's re uh, response be? I know of cases where some people would immediately just say, okay, if she's hiding here, it means that I've actually overstepped or I've done something that is wrong. And then, Immediately, they just okay. they recall and they say, okay, um, I just want to see her and mm. let's reconcile or something. Some others will go, oh, okay, so you came here to come and expose me, right? So I look like the bad and the mad person, right? Uh -huh. So you also need to know, like you were asking earlier, yeah. if you can tell 
what somebody is capable of. So it's not just about finding out if this person is capable of um, of um, the truth, but also finding out what would the person do with the truth. The truth. Yeah, so true. if I tell this person, what would the person do with it? Okay. Mm. So and then you now decide based on that to say, no, she's not here, or um, she came here, but she's no longer here. Something like that, whatever it is. Wouldn't that be a lie? Like, actually, it, it is. Lie. <laughs> it is because, like I said, the question is. Can the person handle the truth? The okay. person cannot handle, handle the truth. The truth. Okay. For me, I think the, the, that question is very interesting. I, I kind of want to look at it like in different ways. Okay. Imagine someone asking you, maybe you went to the, to the movies and you came back late. I do that a lot. I go, go out, come back late. My dad asked me, where did you go to? Oh, I went downstairs. I'm not lying. In downstairs. <laughs> no, but you, but you, I think, I think, naturally, I think women are actually built to not lie. Or not, not, not tell, tell you the truth. truth. I'm not lying. I actually went downstairs. I went downstairs. I went downstairs. So half, half truths. <laughs> yes. Another, another way I also want to look at it. Imagine when, um, Pilate had asked Jesus, mm. um, are you the king of the Jews? Mm. Or people have said that you said it a lot of times. Are you the king of Jews? Jesus did not say yes or oh, no, no. Remember, it he you just said it. He, he was you who said it. So anything you say, that's <laughs> just <it. laughs> So that's one way to look at it. Like it's not actually a sin when you don't tell, tell the, the complete truth, truth mm. but not when you when you're as far as you're not lying. Like I said, the idea is what is the intention? Are you doing it with the intention of deceiving? Mm. So, part, well, part, so deceive, that you that you say, <laughs> are you doing it with the intention of deceiving? Does not necessarily mean that every time you deceive a person is mm. bad. Okay, of course, we already established that when I mentioned if the person is it's going to cost you harm. What what yeah. is that? What's, what the person can handle the truth? Yeah. Mm. But then, when my instinct is to create some kind of confusion, then there's going to be a problem. I think the idea should always be um, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Almost, I mean, always at least. Tell the truth. Or let the intention always be to tell the truth. truth. Unless where something else really, really demands something other than the truth. Yeah, so in mm-hmm. that situation where you went Create to the, the movies, habit. tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so the intention should always be to tell the truth. Oh but I mean, when you were talking, I was going to even back up when you mentioned the idea of children not being able, cap- being incapable of lying. I think lies, the origin of lie is fear. Yeah. Mm. What would this person do, do if I mm. tell the person the truth? Oh. Okay, but before long, you may now become a pathological liar yeah. because you always want to find the easy way out of the situation. Uh, lying do not lying is not always the easy way out. It looks like the easy way out, mm. but it's not always the easy way out because what if that person finds out eventually? What do you think will become of you? As a person, what would be what would be the state of your reputation with that person? What would also be um, the person's relation, the nature of your relationship with that person afterwards? Mm-hmm. Will I be able to trust you? Will I be able to say, okay, um, you, I know why you did why what you did, okay? Or will I say, I don't think I can ever trust you again with anything? Okay, so I think it's safe to say, do not lie except when necessary. Yes, mm-hmm. let it be that you have a reputation of telling the truth. truth. Okay. And this well, person will have a reputation of telling, of telling the truth. truth. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not like somebody will just say, "Oh, you do you know where that's one." That's already yeah. a problem. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's already, that's already a problem. I guess. But, so, but let it be the case that when I say, "Do you know what Marianne did the other day?" She, no, there must be a reason why she, why did, she did that. Did it. Okay, Padre. Case. I know if we keep going on and on and on, <laughs> we're not going to realize that time is actually flying. Sure. Like it's really flying. Sure. All right, guys. It's time for us to meet our KYF crew for the Know Your Faith session. Do not go anywhere. I'll be right back. Do you know that there is always a part of a saint buried underneath the altar of every dedicated Catholic church? Hi, Sam. It's Know Your Faith series, and I am Elefati. So, before any church is dedicated, there is usually a piece of a saint buried underneath the altar of the church. These sacred pieces are called relic, and it's preserved for the purpose of veneration as a tangible memorial. Now, relic is gotten from the Latin word, Relique, meaning remains. Throughout history, relics have been a source of miraculous healing, inspiration of faith, and advancement of the kingdom. These miracles have been documented, even beginning in the scriptures. Moses carried the bones of Joseph out of Egypt, Exodus 13, verse 19. Men placed a dead man into the tomb of Elisha, 
and the dead man came back to life. 2 Kings 13, 21. People touched close to St. Paul's hands. Then they touched that same close to the sick and they were healed. Acts 19, verse 11. St. Ambrose and St. Augustine wrote about personally witnessing miracles after a matters really touched a sick man. Even today, many miracles have been reported in relation to relics of the recently canonized St. Padre Pio. Of course, not every veneration of a relic results in miraculous healings, yes, but it always connects the person with the saint and therefore God. Relics could be an actual bone, vial of a blood, an item used by the saint, such as a prayer book or a cloth, touched to the saint's body. Over time, the church categorized relics into three. We have the first class. This is a part of the saint's body. We have the second class, something personally used or owned by the saint. We have the third class, an item touched to a first class or second class relic. Three major reasons why we need relics are, one, relics have been a source of miraculous healing, inspiration of faith, and advancement of God's, God's kingdom. Two, it also reminds us about the virtuous life the person lived. Three, it, it connects us to God through the saints. So friends, that's it on today's episode of Know Your Faith series. Let me know what you learned in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video, please. Till I come your way next time, always be bold and Catholic. Welcome back. Thank you so much, KYF crew, for that session. Okay, back to our conversation. When is it lying? Now, Padre, the Bible says in the book of Leviticus that it is a sin to lie. But then we see again in Genesis 20 where Abraham asked his wife Sarah to tell the Egyptians that she was his sister so that they would spare his life. Now, would we call that a lie and a sin before God? Or are there lies that are considered lesser or do not qualify as sins? Okay, of course. He came there. Um for Sir, just for Stucker to be saved. Yeah, yeah. And he already knew he had a beautiful wife. Yeah. And his fear yeah. was, if I tell you, well, she is my wife, they'll kill him. Of course, coming from his own culture, he doesn't know what obtains in that other area. But eventually, the king found out. Hmm. Because he was already making advances of the woman, and then something happened to him, and now said, why didn't you tell me that she's your wife? So, but then he said, oh, sorry, I, I was not sure what would happen of me to me. Yeah. So it's clear that sometimes out of fear, like I said initially, people may want to say something that is not um, true. true. But then the idea, like I always tell people, is when you are found out, will you be able to handle the consequence of that action? So it may, it may seem like a human thing to sometimes do certain things that are out of character or out of step with your character or your personality or your, your person. But... Always ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? It's always very, it's always a very personal thing before it is about how other people see it. How do you can you live with yourself after doing or saying what you said? Okay, Father, I have a question now. If I lie for mm. a good cause, like, if I lie to protect somebody, okay. is it going to be considered as a sin before God? Because clearly it is not telling the truth. It is deceiving somebody. Yeah. So is it um, going to be considered a sin before God? I always tell people, um, as a spiritual person, have a spiritual director. Um, before ever you make that decision, speak with him. It's important that the situation is established. But even if you have already done that beforehand, maybe it was an emergency exactly. situation, it was a timely decision, mm. make the decision first. Okay. And then you can always ask and say, look, this is what I did. Is it right? Is it wrong? And then the person will tell you, you could have done it better or you could have said it this way. Let me give you a typical example. Okay. Someone um, says to me, oh, there's this person who's in the habit of asking them for money. Hmm. Every time they see, see, every time this person sees they him, I just say, can you give me, can you give me, can you, what should I say to that person? It's not that I don't have the money, but I feel like there are other people that I can help, not just this person. What should I say? Hmm. I said, tell the person, I can't give you the money now. Hmm. I can't give you the money now. Not, I don't have the money. No, I can't give you money now. Hmm. Uh, so you may spin a story to at least get yourself out of that place, but you need to be able to tell the person the truth. But then without letting them know that, okay, it's not the case that I'm, I just don't want to give you money. Right now, I can't give you this money. But Father, back to the question. Yes. If I lie mm. for a good cause, is it a sin? Like you said, to save somebody's <laughs> life. The person whose life is threatened or the person who is threatening that person's life does not deserve the truth at that time. Say, for instance, people come to your house, 
with machetes and clubs and say, hey, hey, bring him out here, let me bring him out here, let us kill him, let us kill him. You know they here. Because they don't deserve the, the truth. truth. Yeah. Okay. So, so you tell the truth that. to somebody who deserves yeah, it. Yes, so I also think that done. lying, um, we often limit lying to words. Hmm. You get so sometimes it's in the actions as well, the things that we do. Okay. For instance, I think that I still think um that um, Jacob lied. Mm. When he went instead of his his soul so, to yeah. receive his father's blessing, that was a big, big lie because number one, he deceived his father to get the blessing, and he also cheated his brother. So that's also, I mean, in a way, it's it's mm. him lying generally. But then we know that oh, I mean, God favored him and all of that. I mean, he just received mercy. Yes. He also yes. received his own too. Yes. Uh-huh. So <laughs> <he> <laughs> <said>. <laughs> Yeah, so the thing is, I think we, we um lying, like father said, um you 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 were in a house and maybe people come in machetes and clubs and want to kill somebody and then you say, Oh, he's not here, or you wear you are maybe you wear a clothing that's not ascribed to your own tribe just to cover probably up cover up and run away. Something. Exactly. So that's still a lie, but you're doing it to save a life. And I don't think that is a sin when you do that in, in the face of danger. Okay. You get just like people who who are Muslim like, or who people who are Christian and like they say they are Muslim. Me, I still, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do in that kind of situation. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, I, yeah, I yes, won't say. Never been, <laughs> never to be in that kind of situation. After, I wouldn't know what to do yeah. or to consider that, oh, probably they lied or anything. Yeah. But then, like you said, a lie is a lie. And Father said they, they wish there's always a better way of, of doing, doing things. So can we say it's okay to lie to protect a person? Yeah, that putting of people on the spot. People are always <laughs> looking for a, a reason to do whatever. I don't think people will lie, lie thinking about because the consequence. Yeah. They just want you to give them an excuse to say something that is not true. And we'll not be here to endorse <laughs> lying. <laughs> okay, finally, should a person keep the truth away from someone they love? Say mm. a spouse, your fiancé, mm. your parents, your children. Say, for instance, there's something about your past that you feel like if your spouse should know this, it's probably going to hurt them mm. or... You know, it's going to break the relationship. Do you think that people should keep things away from their loved ones? Hmm. This one is strong, but no, so has it. <laughs> Go back to you. Oh, giddy. Oh, giddy. <laughs> but, but for me, I feel like, like Father has said um, yeah. from the onset, or from the outset rather, mm. um, that um, it depends on how the person is able to handle the truth. Hmm. You get so. I wouldn't like. I would obviously already know how this person takes conversations or takes um i mean our conversations the words to know how it affects him or her yeah. before i choose to keep my truth so it's not me lying i'm keeping my truth. truth you understand so it's not like i'm lying to you i just choose not to divulge the truth to you when when it's a relationship between two people i always tell people um know the person you're with yeah and then also know what you want from that relationship if this relationship is supposed to get into become marriage, mm-hmm. and there are certain things that you know, like this person finds out, it would be a deal breaker for them. Don't enter into the relationship keeping that to yourself because it's no longer about you. It's about the two of you. So if there is an information that the other person needs to know, please let them know so that they can make the, they can make a better decision because those things can invalidate a marriage if it becomes mm-hmm. marriage. And there are some other things that are useless information. You want to call them useless information in a relationship. How many boyfriends did you have before <laughs> we met? That's a useless information. Or how many times did you sleep with those of them? That's a useless information. So, yeah. But there are some other information that the person needs to know. If, so like the person says, oh, this for me is a deal breaker. Then let them know. If, they, if they're not comfortable with it, then you move on with your life. Yeah. Thank you so much, Padre You're and welcome. Nonso, for coming on the show and sharing with us. I definitely had an amazing time with I you I did guys. too. All right, guys, there you have it. It is not a good thing to tell lies. God frowns at lies. But it's also important that we judge situations and know when to avoid saying certain things. Just ask God for the spirit of discernment and you will be all right. It's going to be well with you. Okay, that's our show for today. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Dominica Media Presents. Turn on post notifications so that you are alerted when the next video drops. And also follow us on social media at CFF on TV. I am Marianne Ushi. And until next time, keep, keep being saints in jeans and, and shirts. Bye. Bye.